the Omega game framework for Unreal Engine has a feature called Omega Attributes. Attributes are data asset stats that can be used to modify a character's behavior, such as health, mana, strength, speed, etc. As an example, let's go ahead and make a new attribute and call it health. Let's give it the name of health and a label of HP for simplicity. Now you have a few values down here. First, you need to decide whether your attribute is static or not. A static attribute would be something such as strength or defense, where it has a single constant value. A non-static attribute, or a metric attribute, would be something such as health or mana. These can be damaged and reduced from their maximum value to zero. Since this is a health attribute, we're going to leave this non-static. Start value percentage is what percentage value this attribute will start at when a combatant using it is spawned. In this case, let's set it to 1, so we'll start with full health. Max value represents the maximum value this attribute can ever reach. For now, we're going to go ahead and set that to 100. Where things get interesting is in the rank value curves. A combatant component can have a general level as well as attribute levels, or attribute ranks, and these will determine the specific value that a combatant attribute has. The way it works is that each entry in the ranked values curves array represents what value this attribute will have when it's at a specific attribute rank, while the curve represents how that value will scale along the combatant's level. For instance, with this attribute, at level 1, we'll have an attribute value of 100, while at level 99, we'll have an attribute value of 9,999. And this allows for easy scaling for things like character levels. Lastly, we have value category adjustments. This simply determines what the maximum value of this attribute will be depending on the combatant's category tag. If left blank, it'll simply default to the normal values. Next, we'll need to create an attribute set. This determines what attributes a combatant can have. Let's go ahead and add our health attribute to this. Next, you'll need to make sure your character has a combatant component. Click on the component and let's change our attribute set. We'll leave our level and attribute levels alone for now. Next, let's test out our attribute. In the combatant component, call the onDamaged event. Then set it up so that when we receive damage, we'll check to make sure if the player's health is below or at zero. And if so, we'll destroy the actor. Let's also quickly add a way to apply damage to the character. Now if we apply damage, our character is destroyed when it reaches zero. Now normally, you'll also want a way to display the character's health on screen. So let's go ahead and create a new user widget with a progress meter. You can easily bind attribute values to various widgets using the combatant's widget interface. That way, when the combatant is updated via something such as receiving damage, the widget will attempt to access that combatant component and update its widgets accordingly. First, we need to bind what combatant component we want to read values from. In this case, we'll just get the component on the player pawn. Next, we have a few different functions we can use to bind widgets to the combatant. For now, let's just bind that progress bar. In get attribute progress bar, when an attribute receives damage, we're going to check and see if its label is HP, and if so, we're going to update its new value onto the progress bar. Now let's go ahead and test it out. So when we receive damage, it will update on the widget. And that is the basics of setting up attributes. If you found this or any of my other work helpful, I would greatly appreciate it if you would consider donating to either my Locals or Patreon page. Links for everything in the description. Thank you very much for your time.